Hey guys, it's DID Choi here today with a quick tip on how to make a tempo map in Logic Pro. So tempo is arguably one of the most important parts of a film scoring media composer's job. You gotta watch your clips so many times to determine what the right tempo is. Also, if you have any hit points, you have to spend time making sure your music's gonna sync with those hit points. And it's just a lot of work, right? and you don't want the technicalities to interfere with that. So today I'm just gonna talk about how to make your tempos align perfectly, frame by frame, with the exact hit points you might want and different methods of how to do that in Logic. So first I'm gonna go ahead and open the movie here. Basically I made these tempo mapping exercises that are gonna be available free in the description below, courtesy of yours truly, and Basically, all it is is you got a nice empty time code at 23.97, whatever it is, frames per second. As we can see here, if I go frame by frame, we have 23 frames, and then it goes on to the next one, the next second that is. Basically, what I have every once in a while are these little old fashioned streamers that go by. Let me just play it. You boop. And you have a little hit point there, right? The goal of the exercise here is basically to make sure that the tempo syncs with these hit point points and the tempo is a relatively consistent tempo according to what we want. And later on, I'm also going to be talking about how to make a really natural retardando, accelerando kind of thing, tempo fluctuations with this kind of technique. So stick around for that. It might be a separate video if it is. Also, link will be below once it's out. So basically what I've done here, I've imported all of this. What I want to start with is opening my global tracks, making sure that markers, tempo, and possibly signature. I don't know if we'll need to change the time signature. For this example, I'm basically just going to be doing it in 4-4. Probably going to be aiming for a fairly consistent tempo. We'll see how it goes though. First off, assuming if this was a real movie, I would have watched the movie and determined the hit points. For the purpose of this exercise, these little screamers and punches are going to indicate the exact moment that we want to have our hit point at. Okay, so I'm just going to go frame by frame, which is a control you can set up in the shortcuts. For me, I use control and the greater than, less than kind of symbols to go left and right. So control, greater than, less than symbols. Actually, I guess it's just period and comma, although that's what I'm thinking of. So this is the frame, the exact frame where the punch is. So I'm going to go ahead and make a marker there, name it whatever you want. If this is an action scene or whatever, you can say car chase or cut to whatever, close up on so-and-so, you know? Really just up to you so you can keep track of what everything is. For the purpose of this exercise, it's not that important, right? Because this is not a video. Okay, so this next one, again, I'm gonna go ahead and make a marker, go to the next one, just make sure I'm not missing any with this preview. Okay, here's the next one. I believe a couple of these, I actually made flutter punches. So you can see that there were three punches there. And these were used for kind of sync points that were a lot softer. Like you would try to aim for the point back in the day, but because they're conducting, they're obviously gonna be a little off. So for the points where it's not integral to make everything line up like perfectly to the frame, like a Mickey Mousing kind of action, and maybe you just want to have some kind of accentuation on a certain pull-in or something, right? That's when people would use these little flutter things. So I included a couple of those. And depending on what you want to do, you can choose either of these three or the frames in between, as long as it lands somewhere near what you want. So I'm going to choose the middle one for now. Depending on the type of picture you're scoring, these choices might end up giving you some extra flexibility in where you want to actually put the tempo. So this one's three again. So I'm going to do the middle one. There are flutters where I had three and there are flutters where I had five, which were both pretty common in the industry in the past, I believe. Yeah, there's the five. So that's like an even looser kind of thing. So one, two and a half. This is where I'll put my marker for now. Doesn't matter if you're following along with me right now with the download links that are in the description. You can choose to do whatever you want and you could even do this exercise in a different time signature or with a completely different tempo because it should work with various different configurations and the one that I choose is definitely not the only answer. Okay, there's one more at the end here that you can't actually see in the preview, so make sure you're scrubbing through and getting everything. Okay, this is a triple one, so I'm gonna add this in here. That's basically like to signify the end of music before the end of the cue. 
because right at three minutes is the end and this little thing is right at 59.19. Okay, so I went through and did all these markers. Now, depending on the type of video that you're scoring, you might have a general idea of what the tempo you want might be. And you could just start there and kind of figure things out as you go. You could alternatively, if you have a general idea, but you're not really sure of like an exact tempo, you could go to this really cool internet resource called Franz Absil BPM Calculator. And basically what you can do here is go into your marker list, change your view to Simpty, you can just plug in these little values here, 01001602. Oh, we have it in milliseconds. I actually want it in 24p, 01.16.02. And then we can do 36.19, 36.19. So what you do is you basically just plug in all of these values and eventually you can calculate exactly what kind of tempo is going to work and where to start. You can mark in which ones are important and it gives you a best tempo fit, a second best tempo, a third best tempo. So yeah, why don't I just fill this in and once I'm done, we can carry on. All right, so I filled in all the points here. What we're going to do now, make sure that the steps of the BPM, I want it to be as accurate as possible. So I'm just going to set it to 0.1. Upper limit, lower limit. So this is where you can determine if you want a slower tempo or a faster tempo, and it'll give you something that fits in between, right? Maybe for this one, I want medium fast, maybe 100 to 140 kind of BPM range. And then this will calculate what the best fit tempo is. Let's see. Okay, so we have as our first value, 110.0, nice round number. And we get a little bit of margins of errors. These are 0 0.2 seconds, 0 0.7 seconds. So this is not that much of a margin of error. This one maybe is a bit more, but these other ones are okay. So, uh, so in this case, what I forgot to do is add 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 at the start or 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 which will include the start of the marker, which is what I was intending to do here so that we start right on bar one. But that's okay. For now, we're just going to roll with it. I'm going to put in 110 and you can see that these markers are somewhat close to a beat. They're not perfect. Oh, before I do that, very important, big mistake that you don't want to be doing. <laughs> Knock on the head. I'm supposed to be making a tutorial video and I messed this up. This is so important. You got to make sure to go into your markers and lock them to empty positions so that once you start moving the tempos around, things aren't going to shift like they just did when I did that. So stupid me, let's move this back to 110. So for some people, just having a constant tempo that loosely fits the hit points is a perfectly good approach. Just ask someone like Hans Zimmer, right? He's going to do something at, you know, 84 BPM for the whole track and he manages to hit all the points that he wants. Now for this approach, I'm just going to do something a little bit more accurate and more kind of right on the beat suitable for Mickey Mousing so that now that you have one extreme, you can do either end of it. We could call it a day with this 110 BPM and it's close. Maybe add a couple of time signature changes to make sure things land on beat one. But because I want everything to be super accurate, this is what I'm going to do. So looks like this hit point is closest to bar eight, beat three. So what I'm going to do is going to add a little tempo mark right there. And because this is one zero zero sixteen oh two here, you can already see that we're very close 1608 right now. So if I just type in 1602, bam, this tempo changed to 111.8. There we are exactly on the right spot. Let me turn the metronome on. And you guys can hear and see that the streamer and punch is going to land right on bar eight, B3. Pretty nice, huh? Okay. So let's see what happened to this one. Wow. We are very close. If we move one frame over, you can actually see that this is already within the right frame. So we don't even have to do anything with this one. It's just, it's perfectly on the frame that we want it. But just so we can set this as an anchor point, I'm going to add a little tempo point here. The tempo remains the same at exactly 110 BPM. 
for the next temple that will be probably shifted a little bit. Instead of shifting the whole thing and messing up this marker, I can just slightly smidge the temple and make sure this one lands, okay? Maybe I want marker three to land on the downbeat. So here I'm just gonna, for the sake of example, add a 5-4 bar by pressing the plus here, making the 5-4, okay? So this lands back to 4-4 four, four here. Okay, bam, we have this landing very close to the right place. Again, I'm going to add a little tempo point here. Let's see where this lands. Marker three is 311. And we can see here 311. So we are already exactly on point. You can see it's slightly shifted, but because of the way frames work in movies, we're basically on the right frame, okay? So far, 110. Franz Absil, this site, is wonderful. It basically made it perfect. Don't tell me this one's perfect too. I mean, that kind of makes this video pointless. I'm sure one of the other points will be different. Okay, this one's a flutter one, but it starts a little bit later. So let's say we want to match it up with the further end of it. So maybe instead of using marker 4, which is at 1614, let's do 1615 just for the sake of example. Add in another here, 1613. So I want 1615. Bam. We have it landing right on. And now this is 109.52 BPM, which is not noticeable. 0.5 shift is not going to be noticeable when you're listening to it. And it's only like what, like five bars, six bars, which, you know, unless you have a metronome running and it's going for a longer period of time, you're not going to know that it left 110. Okay. Marker four is good. Marker five. Okay. We're close to beat two again. I'm going to do another five, four bar and make sure this lines up nicely with four, four. Okay. This is really cool to me because I totally put these streamers in random spots. And somehow 110 just works so well with most of these temples. Okay, I sense that we're gonna have a slightly different shift here again. So marker five, 47.18, 47.16. So two frames here. That took us to 109.7696, which again is even closer to 110 now. So we're really good. Okay, here it's interesting. It looks like it landed perfectly within the frame, which means we don't need to move this one at all. Okay, and what about the end? Oh, let me just add another anchor point here. And this last one is pretty much good too. This is impressive. Okay. So that was a really quick tip on how to make a really simple tempo map that matches perfectly with your cuts to the frame, not to the nanosecond, but to the frame, which is what really matters in film. And we just added a couple time signatures to make sure things landed on the downbeat. Now, depending on what you're doing, maybe you don't want things to land on the downbeat. Like some things we had land on beat three. If you want, some things could land on a syncopated beat because you want something to be a really sudden jump scare. So that's totally up to your creative freedom as long as you know how to do it. And the way to do all these syncopated beats, you just need to find the right part, put your little, uh, what is this thing called? Playhead. Put your playhead there and add the marker on that beat. And you can also add a little tempo thing right on that beat, right? That way you can sync your hit point to whatever beat of the music you want. And of course you can change things around. I know a lot of people like to do beat mapping, but the problem with beat mapping is that once you do something earlier than all the other points, maybe let's say I want this to be right there instead on the downbeat of bar nine kind of has a tendency to mess up all the other things. Here, it actually did a really good job. Maybe logic updated a bit, but I found that beat mapping is a little less reliable and this method basically guarantees you the perfect beat map. So that's that. In the next video, I'm gonna do a continuation of this and pretend that we want like really big drastic movements in the tempo. Maybe we want a huge rallentando before a huge climax. Maybe we want a little bit of rubato in one of the sections and maybe the middle section is a little bit slower or something like that. I'll show you exactly how to do that. If this helped you, leave a comment below, leave a like, subscribe, notification bell, all that good stuff. This has been DID Choi and I'll see you in the next one.